Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And this is Gloria, your life coach. I help those who are feeling stuck, struggling with difficulties such as self-doubt, inner judgment, lack of confidence, life transitions, and taking steps forward. And welcome to Life's A Shovel. Hi, this is Gloria, mindfulness coach. And welcome to another episode of Life's A Shuffle. Sorry about that. That's okay. This is Ronald Johnson, your mindful coach, and welcome to another episode of Life's A Shuffle. I think both Gloria and I are both excited to hop on a mic at that point. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But today we're going to address a topic on uh, self-care practice. You know, this this term has been really widely used, especially in 2020, regarding, you know, self-care. A lot of people are facing a lot of uh, difficulties uh, financially, loss, can travel, uh, job uncertainties, economy certainties, all these different things that are obviously outside of control. But what are we doing every day to make ourselves whole? And the, the idea of making yourself whole is doing things that make you happy. You know, I can't control, you can't control how economy is. You can't control, I can't control if your boss likes you, are going to fire you. Are the business going to close down? You can have no control of coronavirus. We have no control what the states do. We have no control politicians do. We have no control of the presidency except if you vote. I mean, so you do have some control if you vote. But in essence, it's not something you can't make a difference right then and now. But you can make a difference on how you maintain your own sanity first And what self-care practices are you doing for yourself today and almost every day? Um, You know, I give you an example. I go to bed with meditation, um, releasing any energy that I had in my body. I wake up meditation. may not be doing it for an hour, but I'm doing it for 10 to 15 minutes just so I wake up with self-care, with myself in mind. Now, that may sound selfish, but the idea is if you don't take care of yourself, how are you going to take care of people? How are you going to take care of your job? How are you going to take care of your family? How are you going to take care of your kids? How are you going to take care of your emotions if you can't take care of yourself first? That's the idea of self care practice, putting yourself in a place where you feel whole. Right. And, and self care practice is very important um, to this is to help maintain a healthy relationship with yourself because it, it produces. A, positive feelings, right? And, you know, and let's get this too. The concept of self-care sometimes is different from person to person. It's not the same for everybody. Um, But it all comes down to when you practice self-care, it's basically taking care of yourself physically, mentally, and emotionally. And so let's break it down by this. Mm -hmm. So when you think about self-care physically what comes to mind physically for me what comes to mind would be working out mm-hmm. okay is, is that the only practice you use right now for self-care no um so i have there's different types and levels of self-care for me so physically would be working out and you know working out it's an it's an outlet for me or I play volleyball. If it if it becomes available outdoor right now, when I have a chance, I'll go play volleyball. Um, for my emotions and um, my mentality, there's a lot. There's meditation, and I do breath work. Which you know, in the beginning of the pandemic, I was doing both a couple of times a week, and I went from ten minutes of meditation to now I can do. 30 minutes to a whole hour of it. And I would do breath work practice. And that again could take a whole hour of breath work of breath work. And that could be once a week could still be twice a week. Um, and it, those are the type of self care that I do for myself and sleeping obviously is one of them. Um, and you know, it, and it is, it's different for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, when I think about physical self-care, the, the first thing that comes to mind is, okay, I like working out and obviously that is a physical part. Um, but other things physically that we got to talk about outside, you know, going to the gym and eating right. Great. But the physical part, I think about self-care is the release of energy. 
and vibration. And when a brand bar release of energy means, you know, we have thoughts every day. And when we think about can create motions, uh, if someone cuts you off, you know, you get upset, you're angry, you know, and, and, and that now becomes a physical part. You grab them steering real hard, you know, you're shouting, you know, maybe giving the finger or maybe, you know, you're, you're kind of doing something physically. But that right there creates physical exertion and it's energy right there. Mm-hmm. So when you think about energy, think about physical energy. What energy are you minting throughout your body that promotes self-healing? Are you always having angry thoughts? Um, are you always worried about something? Are you always thinking the worst case scenario? Are you uncon- are you don't have any self-confidence or self-assurance? Those are things right there physically that now can harm your body because it's our thoughts. What you meant physically, how you feel. So we got to take care of our thoughts. So physically we feel well. Now, don't get me wrong. Eating healthy, of course, helps. Working out and going to the gym, of course, helps because those are things that we need and release energy. But what we're thoughts we create also has energy into it as well. Mm-hmm. Now, let's go to mental. I do believe having a great... Um, I've been doing a lot of work here myself, you know, as, as a coach and also I believe having coaches too and, and Gloria's been going through her um, re-injuring with Seth Guru is I have to be mentally strong, meaning that anything that I will be facing now or have faced in the future, how to relinquish that frustration and stress. So what I did is that um, I hired a coach and I've been going over all the things that I had faced as a childhood. You know, growing up, growing up, we all are a reflection of our parents. Now, we can say up and down, I don't want to be my dad, I don't want to be my mom or my uncle, whatever, but you know what, wherever we're around the most, we absorb the most of uh, image from, right? Mm-hmm. That's what we do. And that's as human beings. How do we learn, right? How do, how do animals learn? They learn from their parents, right? So mentally, I feel now a sense of relief. Um, I did some work uh, a couple of days ago, releasing energy. Um, you know, we, we harbor a lot of um, anger um, or we harbor a lot of fear or doubt and frustration. And that mentally now becomes the way you don't take risk the way it starts controlling your life uncertainties. You know, you always hear the old saying goes, you know, uh, fearless. Uh, no one's really entirely fearless. You can't really get rid of fear. Okay. You know, if you jump out of a plane today, there's be inherent fear because you've never done it before. So anything you do new, yes, there's inherent fear, but it doesn't have to control you. When you think about right now, the fact that I've done the work to find out what was wrong with me and how I was seeing in life. Like have you heard the expression, someone say to a guy or girl, you can do better. Don't settle for less. Well, if you don't know how to, if you don't know what less is or the fact that you've been selling for less, how do you know what better is? How do you know where did you, where did that come from selling for less or going for what's easy? I'll give you an example. When I, when I was down to dating, Man, I was always go for the easiest thing, easiest target. Yeah, I want this girl. She's really attractive, but you know that's too hard. I go for the easiest thing because we're afraid of rejection. And that's what it comes down to. So after doing this work now for the last two days, man, I feel a sense of freedom in my mind. I no longer think about winning $10 million. You know, because obviously who doesn't want to have $10 million, right? It, it would do a lot of good. I mean, let's say if you do win $10 million by hitting the lot of them. But what it did for me mentally, it was creating less space in my mind. So your thoughts and what you have going on daily in your head is some of of a lot of different things, but how to release the energy to free more space for more creativity. That's the main key. Um, What I do part of self-care is I I set a routine for myself where I wake up early in the morning. It says before my podcast about wake up at 4, 4, 15, 4, 30, read for about 30, 40 minutes. But now I'm incorporating meditation into that. So that way I get myself on the right you know, right start for the day. I mean, I don't wake up until alarm clock. I wake up, you know, and wake up to alarm clocks, I have to get up. But wake up to check your cell phone, check your emails. If you start your day, or the first thing you do is get out of bed, open your smartphone, check your emails. And it's an email that says, hey, there's a meeting right at 8 a.m. You just got up at 7 a.m. What kind of energy does it create for yourself? Right? I mean, that may not be the best example, but Wake it up without any electronics or anything in your mind 
will be the best time where you get freedom to do things you really want to do. Because the minute that you see that email, you get that text, you get that call, it, it, it disturbs your whole morning. So getting out there, waking up early enough in the morning, working on self-care practice, not doing anything electronically with a device will be the best practice for a lot of people out there. Because first thing you do is roll up out of bed, check the phone. Put that phone, do not disturb up until your day gets started. Then you check your phone and, and see what's going on for the day. Start your day off right. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing I think we need to talk about is... Um, you know, we have a habit, a lot of us, is saying yes to everything that everybody asks us to do, which stretches us thin, but saying no to ourselves. So while we don't want to, may not want to go to that dinner or may not want to go hang out with friends, we inherently not to disappoint, we say yes. But we don't say yes to ourselves. So instead of saying, oh, no, I can't go because I have a test tomorrow or I have to study or I have a paper due after work, you should say, honest, be honest, say, you know what? I would love to go out with you, but taking care of my business at home is more important. So that way you own your truth. You own what you're doing because always jumping up to what someone wants you to do or being asked once back in call, it, what does it do for you? How does it serve you? You know, we always have to look at things in a better and a more specific thing, specific view. What am I doing in life that serves my purpose right now and for the future? Yeah, we forget a lot of the times we tend to forget ourselves, like taking care of ourselves, right? Because you're busy and you're caught up with, let's say, um, pleasing other people. So you're saying yes to everything, but you forget about you taking care of you. How about saying yes to yourself? And then, you know, uh, you talk about even releasing energy um, and, and that any everything that you could have that you've been holding on to for so long and so many years, that could be draining physically. And you don't realize that. You're not realizing that you're being drained by all those, any negative energy, right? But you're holding on to that. So releasing that, yes, is another way of taking care of your yourself, your body, physically but um and you know there's a lot of different ways to how to release that energy you're working on it spiritually right um but again you talk about how all those had impacted you or you know it was because your past experiences past activities from you know when you were younger even from the day that you were born and you don't realize that we don't realize who we are and what was happening to us and how we react to things and how we recognize things is because of our, our past experiences. How will I say that the way you think, the way you feel and the way you act now is a, you know, it has an impact from your past experience. So we talk about, you talk about releasing energy is that's freedom being free from that. And when you you have that freedom, how do you feel? How does your body feel physically, emotionally, and mentally, right? Oh, releasing that energy in my body, I feel like I dropped 100 pounds. I feel light on my feet because we all are a reflection of past events. It can be something that happened, especially in our childhood. We're a reflection of that. And when we release that tension, or that stress, or that anger, or that frustration, that resentment, I mean, the list can go on and on. What, what stories are we really telling ourselves to be true? What beliefs are we having? But to get rid of those um, beliefs that don't serve us or beliefs that are there, it frees us so much freedom from so much more. Because we, we don't sit here and realize the abundance of life. You know, I, I, and now we're realizing, I don't know about this whole idea about goal setting, goal setting. You got to set a goal. You got to set a goal. For what? Like, why am I setting goals? I would set intentions. I mean, I think that's better than setting a goal. I mean, if you want to say attention is part of a goal, but, you know, we're always caught up with doing, 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 mm-hmm. goal setting. Okay, this goal, and then this next goal, uh, you know, but we never sit back and set a goal to enjoy life. Like, I'm going to set a goal every day to enjoy life. I'm not going to think about tomorrow. I'm not going to think about next hour. I'm going to set a goal to enjoy life now in the present because always thinking about a goal, that means you don't enjoy the present. 
Because a goal is something in the future, not something now. Now, if you don't work towards something, yes, you got to do small things now to create the intention or create the story you want or whatever you want to do in the future, but enjoy the now. We're so caught up with thinking about the future that we don't get to enjoy the, the now. And being caught up with the future only creates more anxiety. Mm-hmm. You're, in, you're, you're worried about. In, you're in control of your own destiny. And once you have that control, then you can, you can live the life that you want. You can live the life you want now. You don't have to wait for something uh, to fall out the sky <laughs> and kind of come in your lap. You can enjoy the life you always want to now. Because if you sit down with a piece of paper, I bet you can probably find 20 things that's good about your life right now. Which probably equates less to you know, and then the other side of the list would be everything you want. But think about what now you can enjoy. Because only sitting on there thinking about your wants only does nothing but harm you in the end because your wants, so your wants are a future destination we don't know it actually exists. I want to have kids, let's say, and uh, I need to have a guy to have a kids, let's say, or adopt, whatever you want to do. That's something in the future. Why we can't just enjoy the present? Mm-hmm. Why we can't enjoy now? Because what if you do meet a guy that what doesn't want to have kids, but he's not the best person for you? Are you going to stay with him just because you want to have kids? I, I start realizing I nothing happens by chance. Everything happens for a reason. And when we're in a state of, when we're in a state of that idea, that means we can enjoy the now and the present. Because everything happens for a reason. Nothing happens by chance. Yeah. So if you uh, accepting what's in your mind right now, you're either you either like it or you don't like it. You're going to experience experience everything the way it is right now. Just just enjoy the aura of life. You yes. Know, um, yeah. It is for real because we get so caught up with, um, like what you were explaining earlier about, you know, just doing, doing, doing. We have goals, right? Then we struggle. We struggle towards um, achieving those goals from day to day. You know, you still have to do the work. And at the same time, um, there are things that are out of our control or out of your control. It's how you respond to those and how you decide to approach all the situations, other situations that are in your control. And that's entirely up to you. You're sure right about that. I guess the one thing is not the fear that you can't control everything in your life. Most of us fear the fact we can't control everything in life, but more or less, the fear is we can control everything in life, but we just don't know how to. Mm-hmm. So that brings us to our, our point and something wonderful. Another seminar is coming. I'm super excited. This is, I think, a fifth or sixth seminar. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not keeping count. I'm just having a great time. How to create, how to create awareness and the life we want to live. How do you create awareness, Gloria? How do I create awareness? I think it's um, partly what I had said earlier. It's um, it's how I approach things, how I look at things, how I choose to to phrase certain things. Also, mm-hmm. there's. These are just some tips and some samples that, you know, uh, I'm saying, but, you know, in our seminar, we will go a little deeper than that um, for those who may not understand quite of how do you really create awareness? It's there. How you, how do you just bring it out? And then this is one that we will be talking about in the seminar is, you know, if you're ready for that change, um, and you're just ready to move on. I mean, we've already gone through 2020. 
We're already in the next year, right? Um, how are we going or what are we going to do? What's our plan for this year? And um, creating awareness is one of those things that we need to talk about because I think with 2020, um, with what had happened last year and the challenges that we faced, a lot of us just didn't know what to do. We were so caught up with, you know, with what was happening, with the pandemic, with everything closing down, with sheltering in place. But what was there to do? I think there's a lot to do. You know what? Shelter in place, staying home allowed us to, and for those out there, um, not all, um, for me, allow me to think about what do I really want the rest of my life? I'm so right, caught but, up with working, so caught up with different things. What do I really want? Mm -hmm. So you were able to reflect, right? You were able to have that time to evaluate life. Not many people, and like I said, you know, not so many people have that awareness because a lot and many was so caught up with just being angry because of what was happening or being scared because of what was happening. That's interesting to say that. Being scared of being angry. Are those two emotions that we can control? Are, do they happen to us or happen within us? That's a good question. Well, my answer to that is something that, yes, it is something that you can control. Mm -hmm. And that's something we should talk about in our virtual summit. Sorry, seminar. Not some summits mm -hmm. are last month. We it's should talk seminar. about that because, you know, people always think this happened to me, this happened to me, this happened to me. And we don't know how to reframe this happened to me to something else that empowers us. See, anger, frustration, upset, disempower you as an individual. You know, let's say this. You want to buy some shoes, right? And you get yourself a budget. Say the budget is, let's say, $75, right? But the shoes you really want are $100. Right then and there, you can see we set a limit on ourselves. What would happen if we actually brought the $100 pair of shoes? Say we can't afford it, right? You know, said if I, well, $15 extra dollars to actually, not $15, $25 extra dollars to break the bank. Why would we put limitations on ourselves? Why are we not empowering ourselves much more? Now, I'm not saying take a lot of risk that are dangerous and hurt people. What I'm trying to say is how much of yourself are you empowering yourself through greatness? Are you really holding back? That's what we discussed in our virtual seminar is what can empower you because you're ready for a change. Most of us are ready for a change. 2021 and how to create awareness around that. Mm -hmm. And this month, January is actually a good time to start on, you know, on reflecting, right? The changes that you want to make. And we'll talk about, you, we talked about um, creating awareness. So just reframing negative or, or any challenging thoughts and situations, right? So because how you choose to, to phrase things can make all the difference with your approach and, and your commitment to any work. So the, the words and, the, and perspectives you choose are in your control. It's changing that mindset. It is changing that mindset because you are and have power with inside you. So when is the virtual summit? How can I sign up? Good question. So this, the seminar... I keep wanting to say summit. <laughs> the seminar is on the 25th. It's a Monday. And that would be 6 p.m., 6 to 7 p.m. Pacific time. How can you sign up? You can check it out on our website. So you can go to mine at www.glorialifecoaching.com under events or Ron's. Go ahead. 
as I said, that I changed my website. For those that don't know, it was ronbusinesscoaching.com. I made a change 2021 to it's going to be ronjohnsoncoaching.com. You know, um, when I first started coaching, um, I was always going to coach mindfulness around businesses and leaders because I came from a company and a, and a business, not my own, but another uh, business where, you know, they have horrible leadership, no direction, and a fear based proposition. So, but over time, I realized wait a minute here. I want to help more people. So I went to Ron Johnson coaching because I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. So if it is a leader or a person want to be a leader or a person in a terrible relationship or career, you know, this is where I can help you because I'm not just coaching businesses. You know, business is not a business without people. I'm coaching people in the business. So I'm going to coach people. So instead of being Ron business coaching, you can still find me on that. Or as if you still have a link saved, but you can also find me under Ron Johnson coaching com click on virtual seminars the good thing about this all three seminars are listed for january february march what you can do is when you sign up as a special offer for those out there that sign up you get a link to all three seminars so if you're gonna say ron uh, i want i want to attend one in february and i want to attend one in january you don't have to pay 25 dollars every single time because that's 75 dollars right now 25 dollars gets you all three links to all the seminars so you can join every single seminar from now until march nice that's a that's- great deal that's a great deal. And that's where people should sign up because take advantage of this information out there. It, you know, there's a lot of information, but come from two mindfulness coaches, myself and Gloria, and have done the work, you know, have been there and continue to do the work. Why not get the information from us? Because we, we've been there. We're doing the work and we can share with you. Because that's the key is one sixty minutes of your time, of one day a month. To practice self-care, which we talked about as a topic today, why is that not worth something? Why is not $25 worth the value to yourself? Think about three links to feel better, $25, that's an investment in yourself. And each one is about just an hour of your time. And Gloria go over a great meditation as well. She's going to become our next meditation extraordinaire. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so I hope to see you guys out there. I don't care where you're around the world. We have some from Japan, so the link works. So um, <laughs> right. it doesn't matter where in the world. Um, sign up on the ronjohnsoncoaching.com or go to Gloria's website, gloriacoaching.com. Click on se- uh, events, sign up, and you will receive three links, six minutes of your time to practice and learn how to and incorporate different tools, if you don't know it already, about self-care. So thank you for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. This is Ron Johnson, Mindfulness Coach. Yes, and again, um, thank you. Thank you for listening and supporting us. And you can follow us on our Facebook page as well, um, Life's a Shuffle. Send us an email as well, um, Life's a Shuffle at gmail.com. Um, again, thank you for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. This is Gloria, your Mindfulness Coach.